Gentlewoman yields back. Gentleman from Kentucky is recognized. Make no mistake, this administration wants to ban gas stoves. They've, they've said it out loud. 38 to 40 percent of Americans use gas stoves. I asked the ranking member of the Committee of Jurisdiction for these bills to save our gas stoves. Did he have a gas stove? In fact, he does. I asked him, does it meet the new standards? Would he be able to buy one in the market? He has no idea. He was offended that I would ask such a question. But we have two bills here to protect your gas stoves, the Gas Stove Protection and Freedom Act and the Save Our Gas Stoves Act. The Federal Interagency Committee on Indoor Air Quality has never identified gas cooking stoves as contributing to asthma or respiratory illness, nor has the Consumer Product Safety Commission or the, nor the EPA ever identified gas stoves as a significant contributor to adverse air quality or as a health hazard. But the, the other side of the aisle, they just don't like gas stoves. They're reaching for any reason to ban these things. But they shouldn't. It's short-sighted. Number one, what if everybody had an electric stove? How would they get the energy? Well, you would burn natural gas, as, as many states do, most states do, in a turbine. You would generate electricity in a process that's hardly 50 percent efficient. Then you would transmit it over power lines to the household, which could be hundreds of miles at an efficiency of maybe 70 percent by the time it goes through all the transformers, get to the house and then heat up the pot. Why not take the natural gas to the house and burn it there directly? Well, m many consumers have identified this is a lot more efficient, and that's what they do, and that's why they have gas stoves. They're 3.4 times more affordable than electric stoves. Those who use gas for heating, cooking, and clothes drying, on average, save over $1,000 a year in their household. And when electricity goes out and you have natural, natural disasters, natural gas is there and usually available to offer life-saving heat and to boil water. I, went, I spent about three hours yesterday delving into the Department of Energy's regulations and their scientific basis for what they're doing. Because I wanted to know, how can one appliance that burns gas be more efficient than another appliance that burns gas? If you expose CH4 in the presence of oxygen, you get a certain amount of BTUs, and unless you've got some science project with a catalyst, you're going to get the same number of BTUs from both stoves. And when I dug into it, here's what they want to do. They measured efficiency by boiling a pot of water, or heating up a pot of water. And they found that stoves with heavy grates, or continuous grates, that allow for more safety, well, they said those were less efficient because the grate heats up and less of your energy goes into your water. But people aren't cooking water, they're cooking food. And those grates, they provide more heat as the product sits, as the food sits there on the stove. The continuous grates provide safety for somebody who's not strong enough to pick up a pan, yet they're saying those are less efficient. And then in their studies, if you dig deep enough, they admit that a dogged pursuit of efficiency will result in stoves that are less healthy. Because to make it more efficient, you shorten the grates and get the pan closer to the flame. But when the flame impinges on the pan, it does, all of the, the gas doesn't combust efficiently, and you get carbon monoxide. If all you care about is efficiency, you get more carbon monoxide. What are they doing? They're going after the high-end stoves. That's where they're going first. The ones with the heavy grates, the ones with the thick walls and the ovens that make it easier to cook good food. They're saying they're less efficient, but they're heating up water. They're not cooking food, and they're making assumptions about customers' preferences. And in the realm of electric stoves, they say, well, induction stoves are, are more efficient, so we'll just make everybody buy new pans, because all of your pans don't work on induction stoves. Uh, so what, says the Department of Energy? This is a war on stoves, and this will be undone. The war will be undone. <laughs> or stopped, halted, by the Gas Stove Protection and Freedom Act and the Save Our Gas Stoves Act. I want to finish by talking about another of the bills that's in this rule, which is to restore the separation of powers. It's, it's pretty simple, this bill. It's two pages long, and it's basically a legislative repeal of Chevron deference. Now, Chevron deference may go away soon anyways, because it's based on a, on a Supreme Court decision that said, you know what? 
if a, if a regulatory agency does their best and makes a good guess about what they think the law is, well, then the court shouldn't second guess the regulatory agency. That's not the court's job. The court's job is to look at the law as was written by Congress, not to say, stretch it as far as you want, administrative branch. So the Separation of Powers Restoration Act would require the courts to look at all questions of law de novo, including interpretation of constitutional and statutory provisions. This is a wise bill. It should pass. The rule for this should pass. And I also want to note, just in closing, the American people, they don't understand why you want to give up power to the executive branch. They elected you all to come up here and represent them, to live by the laws that we write, but also to be responsible for those laws when our constituents have to live under them. It sounds absur absurd to the American people that we would want to give up that power that those people have entrusted to us. And whether you're into laws or the structure of government, if you just follow common sense, you know banning gas stoves isn't going to save the planet. It's going to increase prices. It's going to make it harder for low-income and middle-income families to get by if they have to buy more expensive appliances or if they have to cook their food longer. That's the result of these regulations. And all of that could be reined in with the RAINS Act. And that's what we need to do. We need to pass this resolution today, get these four bills on the floor. We've allowed amendments. Everybody under this rules had 72 hours to read the bill. My, what a concept. Give the American people the time to read the bill as well. And we have read it. We know what these bills do. Put them on the floor. I urge a, vote, a yes vote on all four bills and most explicitly a yes vote on this resolution.